Hello, everyone. Welcome to Insight Live and IT Experts Take. I'm Mike Moore, Senior Manager of a Modern Infrastructure Portfolio here at Insight. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Microsoft 365 Copilot and how that's really preparing organizations for the future of work. I know AI is on the tip of everybody's tongue these days. Uh, a lot of client conversations we're having are going down the path of data and AI and how we can get detailed information and analytics from what we're uh, doing within the business. So joining me to talk about Office 365 and a little bit around AI uh, is Joe Flynn, Director and Distinguished Engineer of Modern Workplace and Anna Donnelly, Services Product Manager. Anna, Joe, welcome. How are y'all doing today? Thanks. Good. Good. All right. Uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about generative AI and Microsoft's take mm -hmm. on it, uh, as well <laughs> as how we can use that to really prepare for that future of work and how we can enable productivity. So really to kick things off, let's talk about what uh, Copilot is. So Joe, I'll hand it off to you and maybe you could give us a quick overview. Yeah, let's look at the what's underneath the Copilot platform. If we look at it, generative AI ultimately is the tool that's presented to users, that's presenting the context of the data um, or the wording. In this case, it could even be PowerPoint pictures and slides. The large language model that's being hosted on Azure from a Microsoft perspective is leveraging the OpenAI service. So if you think of things like ChatGPT 3.5, 4, Dolly, and others, that's the underlying piece of the technology that's going to take the data that we have in the Microsoft tool set, correlate it based on what the customer, what the end user is asking, and then bring it back to them through the Copilot platform. Key thing to understand is Copilot is going to be providing users the ability to what we know today from a chat GBT perspective, just to type a type of simple question in. But now you can have the ability to also pull in previous documents, previous pictures, and kind of merge them all together automatically. And that's the nice part, I think, Copilot. It's a productivity tool, right? It's meant to enhance productivity. If so we look at the vision for that to be included in all the productivity apps, so you mentioned PowerPoint, uh, mm -hmm. Word, Excel, or is, are there anything that's really excluded from that, or is it just primarily uh, certain applications? So uh, yeah, at so this at this point, there's not, but I want to make a point really quickly that we're talking about Microsoft 365 Copilot. There, there are lots of things that fall into this Copilot kind of um, or under the Copilot umbrella. Um, and this is the productivity tool that's tied to Microsoft 365, which is really the 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 um, kind of natural language type of AI uh, that end users, your average end users, your your folks that are in finance, um, you know, that are in uh, sales that they can use to kind of do their job uh, every day. So, but at this point in time, I, Joe, I don't know if there's anything that's really been left out. I mean, they've accounted for Viva, they accounted for Dynamics. Um, yeah. Even going yeah, as far I mean, as Teams and Excel. I mean, if you look at the demos mm -hmm. that Microsoft has showed, and keep in mind, this is really early. Uh, most right. people aren't going to have access to this probably till next year. So, what you're seeing um, is going to be or what we see from a Microsoft demo, will it be what we actually see come next year when it's public? Be inter be interesting to see. Um, but if you think things like Excel, right? Creating pivot tables and other items just from asking a question for it to do it and it'll do it for you. I mean, it's gonna, I always look at it like this. We're in technology and I mean, 10 years ago, right? If I had to write a script, I'm probably searching for something already there and then I'll edit it based on what I need. I mean, so early stages of, if you think of the, the LMM tools of, gathering what's there and learning from them. Same thing what we did previously, but now with Copilot and the tools capable, now it's able to take that to, to that much further and provide the productivity to the end user side. That's very nice. So it sounds like there's gonna be prompts in each of those productivity apps where you can ask it through natural language, these types of things, which I mean, honestly sounds great for me. I spend a lot of time in PowerPoint and Excel. Uh, to your point, Excel, writing quick scripts or even doing search functions. Um, what type of analysis can it do, uh, say for Excel, if you're you're putting a spreadsheet together, uh, or even if you want to talk, talk talk about Word, you talked about creating uh, potential sales um, scripts or uh, contracts, things like that. Maybe you could dive into some of the the benefits and what what outcomes we can provide through Copilot when it becomes available. So, where Excel is concerned, all I, all we know is what we've seen. Right, because there is a very kind of small group of folks that have access to this. But what, from what I have seen, I'm most excited about this because as soon as somebody mentions a spreadsheet, I, mean, I just go, you know, blank. In particular, if it has, you know, financials <laughs> tied to it, which is really great for a product manager. Um, <laughs> but, but uh, 
what I've seen is that you can just feed it a bunch of data and say, you know, pull out the most important uh, points in regard to GP or something like that, right? So it's it's more about um, being able to summarize the data without you having to put together uh, all the formulas. That is probably the one that I'm the most interested in. If you are interested in how this is going to work or how this might look, um, so today there is uh, the Bing chat that's tied to Edge. If you have the new version of Outlook, if you're using the new version of Outlook and you hit a link within an, within an email, it will take you out to um, Edge and it gives you a nice little uh, kind of sidebar with your email in there and then you see the Bing chat underneath it. Um, and again, that is if you are, are signed up for Bing chat, you are using Edge. So it'll look a little bit like that where it's kind of uh, just, tied to the application in some kind of a sidebar. Um, but that ultimately, you know, where Excel is concerned, that's probably um, one of the most interesting use cases. The thing to remember with all of this is that putting together use cases that your end users can understand um, is probably the one, the most important thing that, that you can do to really get value out of it. Otherwise, I mean, for us, I assume, you know, definitely everybody on this call a lot of people that are watching us today that are interested in this, you're technologists, right? That you cannot make that assumption that uh, everybody is going to be excited and want to play with it, right? Um, it's in a lot of cases, folks are going to look at it and say, "Why do I need another, you know, Google search?" Right? And they'll be, <laughs> they'll ask it questions and expect it to return a response instead of uh, asking it to you know, put together a document for me or asking it to do things. Um, so that, I think that's probably one of the most important things. Uh, and as we see a little bit more about what the capabilities are, I mean, it's it's everything from summarizing meetings in, in teams and, and automatically identifying action items to, um, you know, within sales, it can identify customer sentiments. Uh, so there's across the productivity suite, um, it definitely does a lot of different things, um, and it is one of those things that I think uh, is going to be overwhelming, I think, to the average uh, end user uh, out of the gate. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of considerations that we're going to get into to prepare for adopting Copilot when it becomes available. Um, but it, it sounds like Microsoft's vision doesn't stop at productivity, right? It's going to be potentially expanded across the entire portfolio to include security, uh, so is there anything we can share around that or anything you could touch on about the security aspects of, um, of Copilot? So, I mean, keep in mind, we have the Microsoft 365 Copilot. They announced Windows 11 Copilot, so it'll be done at the OS mm -hmm. layer. We have Copilot for security coming that's tied into the Microsoft security suite to be able to take, just think about if you deal with the Microsoft security products today, being able to type just natural language, hey, I need to set up a policy for A, B, C, and D. Ideally, no one's ever going to probably allow these tools to just go out and do it on their own, but you're going to probably have, they'll have to validate it. But the point of having to be able to come back with, here is what we're going to set up for you. Just acknowledge it. This is what you want and move forward. Uh, that's going to make everyone's job easier. I mean, that's, and but that's probably going to be the start. Let's, right. I mean, let's look at two years from now, as this matures and this gets GA, are we going to start seeing Copilot for Intune? Are we going to start seeing Copilot for Azure uh, mm -hmm. and just start expanding the more and more capabilities? I'd be interested to see where that goes, because I think the productivity piece is just the start. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, from productivity, it's almost like having your own personal assistant, right? It's not going to do your job for you, but it's going to aggregate data probably within our your internal data state, right? Um, to, to bring together uh, the different responses that it's not just gonna be, you put it in and it's gonna give you the correct answer every time, right? It's something that you're gonna kind of have to spot check. I, I always think about it as maybe hiring an intern when we're talking about AI, uh, that they can put maybe 90% of it together for you, but you wanna check and make sure things are correct. Is that kind of the same situation with Copilot uh, that, that we're gonna be looking for from the productivity suite? Yeah, I like the intern uh, analogy. No, <laughs> uh, analogy, though, not, intern, not, not our own. Sure. Our own <laughs> interns are all geniuses. Um, yeah. but, but I like the. It's. I'd say it's a little bit like that. But the understand. I mean, Joe, this is where we start getting into the uh, how's your data looking 
uh, conversation because yeah. who has it figured out? And I, the example that I frequently use with customers is, you know, how, how are we going to know that I can't say, you know, tell me how much Joe Flynn makes an hour and it'll say, you know, $7 an hour because I had, <laughs> because I had access to some uh, spreadsheet somewhere or some folder that I had no idea that the information was even there, right? So, I mean, there there is definitely some risk associated with that um, because I feel like organizations just don't know what, what anybody has access to. Yeah, um, definitely. And that, that brings up a good point around security implications as well. So, I mean, and, and Joe, I, I can't believe they're already paying you $7 an hour now. Um, you <laughs> have quite a pay increase, but uh, I mean, we'll touch on the security, but from a data uh, estate perspective, I mean, it is really critical. So as you're looking to adopt Copilot and planning to integrate this in the future, what are some of the things that you have to do to really start preparing your data to make sure that you're getting quality information back from Copilot when we start having these natural uh, prompts that we're putting into the different productivity apps. Yeah, so let's let's just um, if you're gonna take a second, there is a question around if Copilot for GitHub is available, and it is available today uh, by per license per user. Um, so just wanted to answer that question. But based on the data front, let me back up a second and, and explain the data that Copilot's accessing. We yeah, mentioned perfect. previously you have to be in the Microsoft Cloud. Um, so essentially everything the user can leverage the Microsoft search functionality in the Office Microsoft 365 space is the data that Copilot will access based on the user's context. So mm -hmm. it's leveraging with security permissions that the user has access to, to give the user the information around the Copilot and what it's going to answer from. So ultimately, anyone today, right, can go into portal.office.com, go to Microsoft search and type in something to see what they have access to. So that's no different. And if you want to pull in third party sources, there's connectors from a graph perspective. There's we know from ServiceNow, Salesforce, there's standard connectors that can be pulled into the graph to use for Copilot. There's also custom APIs you can do to pull information into the graph for Copilot. But that, Anna, Anna nailed that piece and she says it. I, I, love, I love her terminology around this, but she freaks customers out because she has a stat that talks about how many documents a typical end user has access to within an environment and how, many, how much access they have to confidential data that they shouldn't. So think about it today, I gotta go search. I gotta go into Microsoft search. And then like Anna said, she could search for Joe Flynn's salary. Hopefully <laughs> the reality is not $7, but, <laughs> this, I don't need a job. but I mean, now people actually have to search and just scroll pages by pages. If we now pull in Copilot and I just ask a question, it's gonna grab all of that data that the user has access to and bring it forward just like that. Confidential yeah. data, HR data, finance data. You could be, I mean, customers have to be aware of what data is out there what people have access to, otherwise it's gonna open up a lot of a can of worms. No, oh, yeah, definitely. And that come down to a whole or comes down to a whole compliance conversation, what what level of licensing you have with Microsoft mm -hmm. and then the cloud to make sure you have that granular permissions, right? Correct. Correct. And yeah. then the question that just popped up, sorry, Anna, is around inaccuracy or or data mm -hmm. accuracy. Yeah. I think we also, even with the initial pieces of chat GBT where it couldn't even get two plus two right. That's why I commented earlier, if we looked at Copilot for security and other Copilots coming out, no one's ever going to take what it says automatically. You definitely got to put knowledge mm -hmm. to it. So even if I look at an admin position and I ask Copilot to do something, like Windows 11 Copilot, you can ask to do things specific to the OS, specific to your environment. At some point, you got to make sure you understand at least what it's doing to say what it's given back to you. Is it accurate enough for me to move forward? Yes. I would yes. never just take it for what it says and be like, yeah, this is absolute. I feel like that would be my kids leveraging TikTok and telling me, hey, you know what happens on this one? You know what happens on that? And the only thing I could say is, yeah. Yeah, yes, you got that off of this site. Right. Uh, you got to just be careful with the information at the same time. But yeah. there are things that you can do to increase the accuracy of responses. Sure. And I, I think, um, so I've talked a lot about Viva uh, in the recent past and by recent past, I mean, probably the last two years, Viva Topics has always been my favorite. Uh, and for those of you who don't know <laughs> what Viva Topics is, I love talking about it, um, but it curates content in your environment. Uh, and then you get to publish things that that are relevant, that have been curated by and, and looked at by subject matter experts in your organization. Um, so if you have Viva Topics deployed, 
I, it will prioritize responses that come from that are published in Viva topics. So that if you've got folks that are always asking the same questions about your your products, instead of it searching through the wealth of content that is in SharePoint, that is in OneDrive for Business, that's been through your you know search connectors, whatever it is, it's going to first say, you know, the subject matter expert um, in X completed this on the topics page, and it will uh, use that first. So there are ways to, to make it a little bit more accurate. The other thing, you know, as you prepare for all of this um, is to really kind of look at what your uh, search responses look like. Um, if you're using Syntex, SharePoint Syntex, or Microsoft Syntex, sorry, it's no longer SharePoint Syntex. If you're using Microsoft Syntex uh, and some of the natural language search pieces that, that come with that, um, then you can also see how that the responses are going a little bit about how the responses are going to be as well. Um, so if you are really concerned, and then obviously, you know, Microsoft is talking about least privilege access or zero trust, or I'm not a security, <laughs> I'm not a security person, you can tell. Um, but you know, it, if you're really employing those principles, I think that 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 is going to go a long way to, um, you know, hopefully cutting off a lot of the uh, the inaccuracies at the beginning, um, rather than, you know, seeing these things show up places and, and not, uh, not, you know, ever having an awareness, any awareness that that, that would happen. Right. And I mean, that's from a permissions perspective, totally makes sense. We don't want to provide sensitive information via prompts that are coming back or uh, responses that are coming back. Is there any organizational considerations you have to do with the data you have today, file structures, things like that, that should be taken into consideration? So it's not kind of like a, a garbage in, garbage out type scenario for the data that's being ingested into Copilot. I'm going to quote Norm. <laughs> so we have a, there's a gentleman that we work with that is, I love his his uh, analog analogies and the way he describes things. But essentially, you know, there are some people that maybe you don't want any of their content tend to show up in anything, right? You've got someone or or a team that is um, working on confidential mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I mean, Joe, this is where DLP and privacy and all of that stuff comes Information in. We talk about it a lot more yeah. than I can. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you gotta. I think the structure of the data is less important, simply because with search, with the things like Copilot, it's going to just go out there and find all the information available to you. Structure, though, a lot of times can lead to proper permissions and least privilege because you're doing it based on what the ultimately maybe organization persona and things like that. But I do think the tools like information protection and the others, where we're wrapping classification or access based on the content of certain data, helps a ton because it allows you to know who has access to what data and how they're gonna access it. Yeah, that makes sense. And one question I had around that too. So a lot of this, Copilot's analyzing our internal data that we have stored on Office 365 and then in, in the cloud. Um, if we're trying to make uh, our teammates and employees more productive, say we have to do some research or create a new PowerPoint or develop some content around a new emerging technology, is there a way to integrate external data into Copilot and in a secure fashion? Say like chat, GT, chat GPT, like everybody wants to use it, but once you put something in there in a public instance, that information's out there. So you need to be very careful about putting private information or confidential information into an external source. Is there a way to get external information back uh, into a Copilot instance, or is it all specific to your, uh, your Office 365? Um, so, sweet. so through mechanisms that exist today, which I feel it's interesting to me how many clients I bring up Microsoft Search or Microsoft 365 Search to, and they kind of just look at me like, "What? Um, what is that?" It is something. It is included uh, with any Microsoft 365 uh, subscription that you have, um, where you can bring in third-party uh, connectors, right? So there are connectors that are already already exist out there that you can just plug in, um, and then you can also create custom connectors for content external, uh, and then that will carry over any permissions that they have in those systems uh, that exist that you are looking to search as well. Um, so, and again, all of that is still going to be contained within your environment. It's not 
going anywhere external. This is not open AI. Um, this is something that is specific to your enterprise. So if you look at Microsoft 365 search today, that's a really good way to start preparing uh, for this, even if you are not. Uh, interested in Copilot and you just have a pretty robust Microsoft 365 uh, um, deployment, it is something that will help your end users find uh, the content and the information that they need a lot, a lot more comprehensively than what they're doing today. And it's included and they have rolled, they're rolling out this thing called the semantic index, which is um, essentially how they are going to pull the data uh, out that is relevant based on how how uh, Copilot is prompted. Similar to yeah. Viva Topics is sim similar motion, uh, how Viva Topics works with kind of correlating the type of data that's in your environment, how many times it's accessed, how many times people um, yes. type it and, and, and things like that. So it'd be pretty interesting. One thing I definitely want to touch on though is we keep on mentioning Microsoft 365, Microsoft 365 that is going to be the core requirement. So customers will need the Microsoft 365 E3 or E5 licensing at the base uh, to even buy up to Copilot when it actually is released, when it does come out. So that is pretty important to know. You got to be on the E3 or E5 of the M365 SKU. Yeah, and a lot of that is because of just the, the processing power and the security requirements that come along with that, right? I mean, having AI running in your environment, uh, if you're doing AI as Juan Orlandini, our uh, CTO talks about a lot, if you're doing that, that's very extensive processing power that you you could be putting in your data center, uh, could be in the cloud, you gotta be careful with cloud cost and spend, but with Copilot, it's all hosted in uh, Azure for you correctly. So they're, they're doing that heavy lifting through their subscription-based models to do all this heavy lifting, the processing for us, which which is really good. So that's a that's a good call out, Joe. That that is one of the things that we need to start doing to prepare our clients for Copilot. Are there any other top considerations that that we want to leave the folks listening with? And maybe before we get to that, I think we may have uh, talked to Matt Kirk's question. It just got pulled off, but it, it was really talking about internal versus external. So I think we touched on that with Chat GT, Chat GPT, and pulling in the external mm -hmm. prompt or Microsoft Search. Um, so uh, we might as well address the next question that came in. So will Copilot be a separate charge from E5 or is it going to be included? And I think that's a great question and and maybe an unknown, but Joe, uh, yeah, I'll let so you it's, uh, it's still unknown for the most part, but what we do know today, and, it's, and they've been communicating it pretty well, even most recently, is E3, Microsoft 365 E3 or E5 will be the base requirements. And then most likely, as of right now, Copilot mm -hmm. will be an add-on license to those. Um, so previously we did here, it was E5 was a minimum requirement. That's actually shifted. So the semantic index that Anna talked about, that's what's included in the M365 E3 SKU and E5 SKU for the baseline of Copilot to even work. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so we don't know what the model is going to be. We don't know what the cost is going to be. We can certainly speculate with the what uh, what's going to exist, but also understand that if you're using it in the right way, um, and you're, you know, genuinely looking at the use cases and how it can make your organization more efficient, not just handing it to your end users, right? That's that's what IT always wants to do is just be like, here, right? your ERP system, anything like that, with that kind of care. Um, that if you are using it in the right way, hopefully it's going to pay for itself. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of hype. And as we talked about before, I mean, this. It's we're still a few months away, maybe even next year before we really start seeing this generally adopted. So definitely getting prepared now is for it. Um, one thing Microsoft is really good at is sharing their vision and a lot of the mm -hmm. hype that we generate, we often see them deliver on consistently. Yeah. So, I mean, I, it's a really exciting time to, to start seeing AI being brought into these productivity tools um, and expanding throughout the entire portfolio, which is really gonna make everybody's life easier and everyone get that personal assistant feel. So I'll do one one more quick round the table. Um, final thoughts that we wanna leave folks with as they prepare um, or if they wanna learn more about Copilot, what are some general recommendations or guidelines that you give? And Joe, I'll go ahead and start with you uh, and then we'll finish off with Anna. Yeah, so I think the guideline I give for most customers we're speaking to today is you have to be in the Microsoft Cloud to get the benefit. Uh, leveraging things like SharePoint, OneDrive, Outlook requires a new Outlook client, uh, Teams, like that's, it's gonna be leveraging the data that you access on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you have home drives that are sitting on-prem in a data center, 
you can pull those in with third-party connectors to the graph, absolutely. But natively, right, out of the box, it's going to leverage what you already have in the mm -hmm. cloud. I think the next thing to think about is start thinking about what data is in the cloud and who has access to what data. You have to wrap governance and security around that data just so you're not opening up legal issues or other issues pertaining to our issues within your environment based on what people have access to that these tools are just going to bring forward very easily. Yeah, perfect. And Anna, same question. Any final thoughts, considerations? Yeah, in, in addition to, certainly I agree with everything that Joe said. I think the other thing that um, I would really start preparing for is to start upskilling your end users um, in, use, in using AI, right? Um, being able to appropriately prompt, you know, getting folks that are in middle management, management positions to start thinking about ways that they can use this. Um, I think that, and really kind of preparing your end user population to adopt just in general, right? Because in a lot of ways, we don't have that down to begin with, right? So we, we push out new technologies and we train and, you know, are we really um, in a position where we're engaging end users in a way that they are going to be consuming information coming from, from IT? Uh, and I think preparing organizations for that piece uh, and knowing that they are, you are going to have to upskill uh, folks on how to use that, I think is important. Um, and then, you know, like, like Joe said, just really preparing your, your data estates and, and looking at what you need, where are your policies at today? Um, you know, those sorts of things I think are going to be critical uh, to being productive uh, when this thing is actually available to everybody. Yeah, perfect. So just to sum it up, got to be in uh, the office cloud. So you got to migrate Office 365. Uh, compliance is key, getting your data state in order, and then making sure you're getting adoption out of it. No one wants to buy something, have shelfware. So getting that uh, employee and user um, education around how we can use AI, how we can use it productive, productively is going to be really critical for making sure that any co-pilot initiative is a success. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, Anna and Joe are leading experts in co-pilot. Joe makes $7 an hour, and he is happy to answer any <laughs> questions <laughs> regarding co-pilot. So uh, in all seriousness, though, um, we really do have a, a great team who focuses on Microsoft and helps our clients adopt solutions like this every day. Uh, Joe and Anna work with these folks, and they are these folks. So if any questions, feel free to reach out. If you want to learn more, you can go to solutionsinsight.com uh, and we can continue the conversation. So really appreciate appreciate the input today, the conversation, Joe and Anna, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. And thank great. you for joining. Thanks.